Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada Newsmix on the broadcast today. The ever bashful Rory McShane joins us today. He's a Republican political consultant for the whole show on an all-new Nevada Newsmakers. Safety. We all think about it. You think about it when he buckles in, when you check your mirrors and put away your phone. RTC thinks about safety too. In fact, we create it. Center turn lanes mean fewer blind spots. Bike lanes keep cyclists and you safe. Roundabouts reduce injury collisions, and all these crosswalks are designed to keep families like yours safe. Safety is your priority, and it's ours too. Every day, in everything we do. Retail's impact on Nevada's economy? Enormous. 8,600 businesses, large and small, employing 145,000 workers. And last fiscal year, retail paid tax on nearly $60 billion in sales. We're the Retail Association of Nevada. We support retail, we help it grow, and we mean business. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Pro Group Management is the place where companies can find workers' comp solutions that are designed to meet their specific business requirements. As regulations evolve, Pro Group takes a proactive approach to clear the path to make sure your business stays ahead of the curve. Knowing your workers' comp program is optimized, you can focus on other important matters related to your growing business. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. Safety is the number one priority for the trucking industry. Over $7 billion a year is spent on technology like this electronic eye that will apply the brakes automatically. But the most important factor for safety is the truck driver. These hardworking men and women who safely move over 70% of our nation's freight and 94% of Nevada's. We thank you because trucks move America forward. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad on No Holds Barred Political Forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we are pleased to welcome back to the program uh, Republican political consultant Rory McShane. He is CEO of McShane LLC. Pleasure to have you back on the program, sir. Pleasure to be here, Sam. So we are taping this on the morning of May 27th, uh, which is the morning after the governor um, said that uh, we are in phase two, which means opening up casinos and pretty much everything else in the state. Um, that was originally supposed to be phase four, but that's fine by me that it's phase two. Um, your thoughts on, at this point in time, for the general population, is COVID done for the silver state? Sure. Well, I, COVID never started for the silver state. I mean, you look at the infection rate, the infection rate, the death rates, the utilized hospital beds. You know, I mean, we the governor uh, crippled our economy uh, like we had an infection rate of New York City or you know Bergen County, New Jersey, or something like that. But 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 you know, and maybe it's a factor of being a more spread out population. I'm not sure. But uh, but but the western states never saw COVID like the eastern states did. Um, you know, this was a this was a headline grab for Sisolak that cost a lot of good people their jobs and their businesses. Um, so declaring co you know declaring COVID is is over. I mean, I, sure, but it, it, for the Western states, it never began outside of Steve Sisolak's mind and ego. Okay, so let me play devil's advocate here. Uh, California certainly, um, both in Northern and Southern California, had major outbreaks. Um, and the biggest problem that would have occurred for Nevada would have been if the tourism industry was continuing, we could have seen tens of thousands of people coming to the Silver State and potentially infection rates through the roof. So I think it's tough to, to look at what the governor's initial moves were, initial moves, and say that that was the wrong place to be. Um. I, you know, Sam, I, I believe the First Amendment of the Constitution of the United States protects free assembly and free commerce. I think any time you're moving to violate those rights is the wrong move, regardless of your motivation to do so. And California is a state of 40 million people. We're a state of uh, not even 3 million or th about 3 million. Um, 
I, I think we could absolutely say that, that, that they were the wrong moves um, that were further compounded by his obsessive need for press, closing down houses of worship and stuff like that. I, and I, I'm not saying that, that this move was flawless. I'm just saying that if there had been a major outbreak of COVID, um, the results could have been an even longer potential recovery period uh, for the state of Nevada and its main gaming industry. Um, Jeremy Aguero at this point has said on this program last week uh, that we're looking at anywhere from 18 months to three years for a recovery on the strip. Does that sound like an accurate number to you? I mean, to be honest with you, and I, and I hate to say this, I'm not concerned about the strip. I mean, yeah, I, you know, I mean, I, I, I certainly hope we have a recovery, right? I mean, those are the, that's the, that's the major business epicenter to our state. What I'm concerned about is the, is the, is the guy who owns a, a plumbing company with two employees. There is no recovery for him. He's blown through his savings. He hasn't made his mortgage. He hasn't made the, the payments on his, uh, on his work vehicles. Um, and he's gone through everything he's had and he's out of business. There is no recovery for him. Um, there is no ability to get, you know, to, uh, you know, to sell off stock and get quick investor capital and stuff like that. I think for small business owners in Southern, in Southern and Northern Nevada, there may never be a recovery. Um, and, and I wouldn't disagree with you on that. I mean, you know, uh, we're certainly going to see a major shakeup um, and a change of lifestyle for so many people in business. Um, what's fascinating to me is, is two things. One is everything I ever heard about the economy blown out the window, i.e., you know, being concerned about debt. At this point, people on both sides of the aisle, people on both sides of the we shouldn't run up government debt or we should run up government debt have all said uh, close to zero or if not zero percent interest rates, this country can afford the literally trillions of dollars that the government is spending uh, to maintain our position here. Does that not stun you that everybody from the Fed down is saying, oh, no, this is okay? Well, I mean, I think it's, you know, I think it's calm in wake of panic, right? And I certainly understand it. You know, I mean, before the, before the housing crash in, in 08, right, you never had Hank Paulson come out and say, everybody, you know, fear for your lives and flee if you can. Um, you know, the, the government maintained that, you know, oh, this is an isolated, Bear Stearns is an isolated incident, Lehman Brothers is an isolated incident, you know, as the dominoes were falling, pretending that the next domino wasn't going to fall. The simple fact is you can't print money without devaluing currency, right? You devalue currency, you're stealing from people who've saved, people who saved are people who loaned. You cannot do stuff like that without creating enormous reverb in the economy. Now I understand it, right? It's the, it's the, it's the question of, you know, do we, do we print the money and loan it out in hopes that the business owners can survive and then we solve this problem down the road or do we let them fail now? Uh, so, so I certainly understand it, and, I'm sh and I think the impetus was good, and I think it, it kept food on a lot of people's tables, but we can't pretend that there are not, there are not, are not actual ramifications for these actions. Um, the other side of this is, you know, for years we have had discussions about, you know, gun control and lack of gun control and talking about, um, you know, we need to have our ability to defend ourselves. If the government ever turned on us, we would have our weapons. This country gave up the fight without one bullet being fired. I mean, everybody stayed at home. Everybody did what they were told. Did that in some way surprise you? Well, I would actually disagree with your assumption there, Sam. I mean, you look at Michigan and Kentucky where armed protesters took over state capitol buildings, right? And, and there were no shots fired. They were very peaceful. They were very respectful. But they were clearly demonstrating that we will not uh, com comply with unconstitutional orders. And we have firearms as a, last as a last means of defense to protect ourselves against an attempt to violate our constitutional rights. So a shot was never fired. And I think everyone is very thankful for that. But I think that, that the these, these people who I would call patriots were very clear in saying, you know, if necessary, we will defend our rights by means of force. Um, and, uh, you know, and I think they have ever had have every right to do that. And I commend them for the fact that they went and they protested and they made their point and they actually got, you know, several of the governors to back down, um, but remained peaceful. And, and I also, and, and, and let me say, I also commend the law enforcement officers in the, in those situations, because I'm sure that's a tough situation to keep a cool head in and both sides did. And that's wonderful. And I think the point was well made.
Well, and, and I agree with you. We were all delighted that, um, that there was no shots fired. Um, but we have 320 million people in this country, 320 million privately owned firearms, and not a shot was fired, which is great. But my point is that, that the entire country gave up its freedom without one shot being fired. And, and I d believe me, I don't want any shots fired, you know. <laughs> uh, but I'm, I'm just saying that, you know, it was kind of like, remember um, w in the riots in LA, when uh, you went to Koreatown and there were always little old Jewish ladies who were cleaning up the streets. And I thought, oh my goodness, how brave these women are because they're down in this most violent area sweeping up the streets. And then the camera pulls back, there's a tank defending them. I mean, you know, when, when it comes down to it, the government wins. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I disagree, Sam. I, well, one, let me, let me start at a couple points. No government in, in, in human history has ever taken rights away by saying, now we're coming to take your rights, right? It is always, you know, I mean, look at, I'm not comparing the two situations, but the, but the best example of government taking rights away is Germany in the late twenties, right? You know, uh, you know, this is a crazy situation caused by the treaty of Versailles, uh, you know, we're an economic pandemic. We just need supreme power for a little while and we promise it won't get out of hand. Then we have World War II, right? No government in the, I mean, and at the same time, the United States was taking away the rights of Japanese Americans, right? Saying, you know, oh, we are promised we're just stripping your rights for a little while here. At no point in history has a government come and taken rights by saying we're taking your rights. It's always been oh, there's a pandemic and we need to take your rights for just a little while, right? But the nature of power is absolute. The nature of, pow the nature of governments is that they never take power and, and give it back. Um, but, uh, but I disagree with your assessment that government wins every time. Uh, you know, I mean, again, you had armed protesters, uh, you know, all throughout the country who were clearly saying we wish to be safe and we wish to be respectful, but we are not going to give up our rights to freedom of assembly, freedom of religion. Um, and, and by the way, I like your example of Koreatown in, in the LA riots. And I would remind you of rooftop Koreans, right? Korean business owners who took firearms and took to the roofs of their businesses and said, we did, said that we have a constitutional right to engage in free commerce. We have a right to life, liberty, and property, John Locke, and we will defend those rights uh, by force if necessary. And, you know, you try to steal from us, we're going to shoot you. Uh, because government did not win. And these people were saying, we are going to protect our God-given rights by force because we are entitled to do that from the Constitution of the United States. And that's where we take a break. If I can just draw you out in the next segment, I've got to stop you being so shy. One day i got to stop being so shy. <laughs> we'll be right back. Because of UMC, I'm putting my free time to good use. Because of UMC, she keeps me on my toes. Because of UMC and this guy, I'm here. UMC, the highest level of care in Nevada. Hi, I'm Eric Robnett, owner of Home Energy Experts. Has this ever happened to you? Honey, did you remember to turn down the thermostat? <sighs> Forgetting to set the temperature? Not fun. We can help. Our new smart thermostat keeps the temperature set for your comfort all by itself. I'm feeling hot now. <sighs> to increase your comfort, go to homeenergyexperts.com for details. That's homeenergyexperts.com. The signs and symptoms of cataracts can start out small with subtle changes in your vision. So don't wait. Be proactive and take your vision into your own hands. If you're experiencing the onset of cataracts or just have questions, contact your eye care professional or call Eye Care Associates of Nevada today. Dr. Hiss has years of experience specializing in the surgical correction of eye disorders and has completed over 84,000 vision correcting procedures. At Eye Care Associates of Nevada, we'll change the way you look at the world. Dad? Why are you learning? This place is great. Huh? You gotta try this. Wow! This stuff is great! People are gonna love it! Yes. Yes, they will. This is Nevada Newsmakers. 
And back on Nevada Newsmag as we continue our conversation with Rory McShane. He's the CEO of McShane LLC. Uh, he's a Republican political consultant. Um, so this thing devolved very rapidly into politics. It went from a health crisis to a, a political situation. And now we're looking at another round of funding potentially. Um, and the uh, Democrats passed the bill out of the House. Um, they want to fund a lot of things. Um, the Republicans are concerned. Uh, Mitch McConnell is looking at this going, you know, it seems like in this bill you're trying to fix a lot of the problems that have occurred in state governments uh, with things like uh, public employees' salaries where there's huge amounts of money uh, that needs to be put into these funds. Um, where do you think we're going to go? I, I mean, I, I guess the bottom line for me as I look at this is if government does not maintain help for the country on whatever level, whether it's for public employees now or local governments, et cetera, if, if things crater financially and we start le losing services all over the place, I don't care what party you belong to, you're not getting reelected in 2020. Would you agree with that? Um, yeah, that's, that's a great question, Sam. Um, there is that is that is a fair that is a fair assessment, but but you know but I always hope for political courage, right? I always hope that we will have statesmen who are courageous enough to stand up and say this government is trillions of dollars in debt, right? You know, you know I mean uh, before the, before the fall of Robert Mugabe in Zimbabwe, people were bringing uh, wheelbarrows of cash to buy loaves of bread. A loaf of bread costs two millions two billion Zimbabwean dollars. Right. I mean, you cannot print money at infinitum. Uh, and, you know, I, I so so you're probably right. People tend to vote for self-interest over over realism. But I would hope and I you know, I would hope there are there are those who will speak who will speak out of political courage and will say, you know, it's a great Thomas Paine quote. If there is trouble, let it be in my day so that my children may have peace. So I, I do hope for a few politicians, statesmen, what have you, that may be willing to say, let us suffer now instead of you know printing this mass amount of currency and pushing a, 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 a currency inflation explosion onto our children and an economic crisis to them. Well, a, a couple of points to come back at you with. Um, one is, um, that, you know, political courage, good luck on that one uh, in an election cycle. I'm a political um, consultant. I always advise against political courage. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's integrity and honesty right there. Um, the chairman of the Fed has said, and, and, you know, positioning the Fed as a non-political body, has said we have the capacity to, to be able to print money, to do what is necessary, uh, to be able to take care of this situation. And politicians need to have the courage to follow through and to be able to pass laws that will help fund this crisis and get us past it and that we can afford it. And I go back to what I said earlier, experts on all sides are saying uh, these are interest rates over a 30 year period, we can amortize this and not cause massive inflation. Do you, do you disagree with the Fed chairman on this? I mean, what I would, I, I mean, so, so basically, and, and, you know, I, I am, I am, I am no economist, nor do I play one on television. I mean, basically the theory is, is that, is that new tech creation in the United States has created so much wealth and wealth potential that we have actually not printed enough currency to keep up with the level of wealth and wealth potential created by new technology in the United States. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I don't, that, that argument doesn't make sense to me that based on a hypothetical future amount of wealth, we can print currency to, uh, to keep up with that hypothetical future amount of wealth. That doesn't, that doesn't, that doesn't track for me. Um, you know, I mean, the buying power of the dollar has, has decreased every year for, I don't even know how long, a considerable period, considerable period of time. Um, and again, what you're doing when you print currency is you're stealing money from people who have money saved. Well, it, it, it's, it's interesting that, um, you know, you look at this and, and you listen to Fed presidents who are the presidents of the, the 12 banks. And they say that the biggest mistake in 2008 was not being aggressive enough. And so that is why they are determined to be as aggressive as possible. 
I think that for a long time now, with the low interest rates, what we've been doing is screwing the savers and screwing um, the elderly because they're getting no increase in their funds, they're getting no interest on their savings. So that portion of what you're talking about has already happened. It's, it's not the future generations, it's a current generation of senior citizens who are not getting what they should get. Let's take a break. I wanna thank you for bringing up Robert Mugabe, first time in 18 years on Nevada Newsmakers, we have discussed uh, former President Mugabe. We will be right back after this. Dimitri Prine here for Design Outdoor. Come visit Design Outdoor's store and backyard to see our wide selection of fire pits, barbecues, and pizza ovens, natural stone water features, and fountains, and frost-proof pottery. Our store and backyard are located at 11600 South Virginia, just north of DeMonte Ranch Parkway. Visit designoutdoor.com or call us at 851-9499. One of the most psychologically damaging things parents can do to children in divorce is disparage one another, which is why I can't believe I even have to make this commercial. Half of your kids' genetics come from this person you're spewing hate about. Your children have the right to love you both, but more than that, they deserve to love themselves. Marilyn York might be a men's rights divorce attorney, but this is for every selfish parent. Shut up! Hi, I'm Dave Newman. Remember me? I used to be the house detective, and now I'm a realtor, full-time at REMAX Realty Affiliates. A lot of people ask me, how's the market? You know what? It's fantastic. If you're even kicking around the idea of buying or selling, give me a call. Let's talk about it. Call me at REMAX Realty Affiliates and just ask for the guy who used to be the house detective, Dave Newman. Everyone is talking about opioids, but they're not the only drugs that can be harmful if taken in large quantities or not as prescribed. You also need to be aware of side effects from anxiety drugs, muscle relaxants, sleep aids, and stimulants. Mixing prescription drugs with other drugs or alcohol can be dangerous. If you take Ambien with a glass of wine, it may be enough to stop you from breathing. Prescribed drugs can be just as dangerous as illegal drugs. Take medications only as directed. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Rory McShane. He's the CEO of McShane LLC. Uh, It's a Republican political consultancy firm. So you represent Jim Marchant, who is running in uh, CD4 um, against Stephen Horsford. And I think you have been handing the biggest gift of all time, which is his admission um, recently that that he's been conducting a 10-year-old affair um, and, uh, you know, while have, having run for so many years as a family man. Your thoughts on this race and, and how this plays for you? Because the media has really not overcovered this event, to say the least. You know, it's so weird how, you know, the media never tends to overcover Democratic uh, moral ineptitude, but always tends to overcover Republican uh, moral ineptitude. Uh, but, uh, you know, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think the attack on Mr. Horsford is that he's had problems in his marriage. I think that's between him and his wife. I think the attack on Mr. Horsford is it looks like there was impropriety with his campaign funds. There was a significant attempt to not be transparent, um, which, which quite frankly adds to what we know about Stephen Horsford already, right? He's a guy who makes his money at a lobbying firm in Virginia and comes back to Nevada one day a month and uh, drinks a cup of coffee and says, you know, welcome to my house in North Vegas. Um, you know, and, and this is emblematic of the modern Democratic Party. Do as we say, not as we do. Um, I, I liken this to uh, Governor Whitmer in Michigan, who's, uh, you know, put the state on lockdown in response to Corona and was caught with her family taking the boat out this past weekend, right? You know, the party of, do, let me manage your life, but I can't manage my own. So I think that is the real charge against Mr. Horsford, not that he's had these problems in his marriage and had these, these affairs and then used resources uh, the, the charges that he's used resources to cover it up all the while, as you said, Sam, running as this family man. Um, but again, the, the, the charge as a whole against the National Democratic Party, Mr. Horsford being emblematic, is let me run your life, but I can't run my own. Um, and it's interesting 
um, you know, uh, he asked for privacy for he and his family. And, and quite frankly, I feel terrible for his wife and his children that they have to go through this, just as I felt the same way for the family of John Ensign um, and Jim Gibbons. Um, but Stephen Horsford is a public figure. Um, Brian Sandoval was a public figure uh, that also got divorced and nothing was written about that, uh, which was kind of bizarre to me. Um, and uh, Jim Gibbons was hammered um, and forced out of office. Um, uh, I mean, he, he managed to make it through the first election cycle, which was indeed a miracle, uh, but was forced out of office. Th there, there seems to be a lack of balance here in the way that these are covered. Sure. I mean, again, I think that obviously with Gibbons and with Horsford, there were a lot of extenuating circumstances surrounding, you know, surrounding these events, right? I mean, to the best of my knowledge, and I may be very well wrong, Governor Sandoval, you know, was not engaged in a situation where he attempted to put a woman on state or campaign payroll. Uh, you know, he just, he, him and his ex-wife made a decision that marriage was no longer in their best interest. And I, I hope, you know, the governor's now remarried and I hope they're both happier now doing very well. That's a private decision of a private citizen and a private family. I think that is a wholly separate thing from using state or, or campaign, which I would call public, like right, the larger public, the zeitgeist resources um, to, 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 to conduct a really seedy, uh, seedy operation. All right. And that's on, on the phrase seedy operation. That's where we have to leave it. Roy, pleasure to have you back on the program. Always so, a good a fun conversation. Thank you. And Thanks. we'll be right back. A bird's eye captures its surroundings at different heights. At Brian Culpa Photography, we can make your imagination soar over buildings, parks, cityscapes, and beyond. Brian's images tell the story and get the job done. If you need a new perspective to tell your story, contact Brian today. Brian Culpa Photography. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. Dad? Why are you learning? This place is great. Huh? You gotta try this. Wow! This stuff is great! People are gonna love it! Yes. Yes, they were. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. Pro Group Management specializes in providing industries with the necessary components to satisfy and exceed workers' comp requirements. Every business has unique needs and specific regulations. Pro Group Management stays ahead of the curve, providing up-to-date services to keep your industry in top form. Discover how we simplify your tasks, improve efficiency, and reduce expense to keep you moving in a positive direction. Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. You can now watch Nevada Newsmakers on YouTube. Just go to YouTube and search for Nevada Newsmakers and become a subscriber. We'll see you on the next broadcast. Thanks for watching and listening.